We've been tasked with redesigning the website of one of the biggest channels on YouTube. On the previous episodes, 10 Flux students guided by two expert mentors have met with the Hacksmith team, upgraded their brand with a new creative direction and designed a new website for them. Today, they're going to have to bring their designs to life by developing it using Webflow. Then they'll have to present the website to their team leads. Only two will go to the next step to present it to the Hacksmith team. Welcome to Studio Experience Episode 4, brought to you by Flux Academy and Webflow. Now that the designs are ready in Figma, the designers are going to bring it to life using Webflow. In every design, there's always some tricky parts for development. Luckily, the designers have the Flux expert mentors at their disposal. Created a style guide with all the fonts, all the styles, classes. I was also able to create some cool Easter eggs for the fans to explore on this website because I thought it would really excite them. For example, when you go to projects page, you will have this cool lightsaber animation. On the projects page, you, you have this animation of James hanging on this big door hammer and things like that, I think, make the website really stand out from competition and also to excite the fans and the potential partners. Relying on a framework like Client First by Fintweet has just been super helpful. And what's great about it is that, you know, they have a style guide that's already baked in with a bunch of classes and I can just go in there and sort of manipulate them, change the textiles, change the colors, give the spacing definitions. And that kind of just flows consistently throughout the site. Leveraging the CMS and sort of, you know, as you can see the structure here, product, projects, videos, anything that sort of felt like it was going to be a group in a repeated pattern, obviously leveraging the CMS was super helpful in the build here and follows the guiding principle of, of having Hacksmith be able to go in and edit pretty easily. When you load the page, we get that pretty cool animation there and then that sizzle reel. And then we see that sort of make it real, just stay there as the video plays. And when you continue to scroll down, there was this project section that I had in my design, but I wasn't 100% sure how this was gonna be built as far as the slider component. So I actually came across a pretty cool tutorial, a uh, shout out to Tim Ricks, where he has something like this. And what's cool about this is that you have the giant preview image. So get sort of going for that cinematic feel here. You also have the preview thumbnails so you can see what's next or click on one of them. And what's cool too is that these, are clickable too. So once you click on, let's say power loader, you take into that project details page. This was built with the CMS. If there was these projects that needed to be added, changed, rearranged or whatever, that can all be done from the CMS. So I started with the nav bar, which is simple in Figma, but in Webflow, actually it's quite difficult to get the etched corners right. But thanks to the amazing help of uh, Flux mentors and as well as my colleagues, I was able to find the code that does that. And that was really wonderful. So one of the challenges, as I mentioned, was how to translate the two main target audiences that Hacksmith Industries are looking for, which is clients and the traffic from the target audience. And the one way I thought about fixing it was dividing the submission points into two. So one is for collaboration with Hacksmith and one was for submitting the project ideas from fans and also like feedback. That way there's nice categorization and the messages don't get lost in the river of the emails they receive. And ending with the footer, I also kept this techish etched vibe to it and made the pronounced section the careers. Now they have this like red bar, so you know it's open and you can dive deeper into the other pages. When you hit this, they have a lot of wiping motion, magnetic button with the notched areas and the projects. As you scroll, there's some interesting interactions going on. The different layouts create a kind of interest. So some of the key challenge that I faced in the build was actually trying to make this showcase section here responsive because it is like a two column, but I want it to stack accordingly. Something like this, so it's like still two columns. And then I want a specific order, like two video images first, and then like one, this kind of uh, numbers tag, then followed by a video and a numbers tag. So I had a lot of trouble with it, which luckily for Francisco from the Flux Academy team helped me out. Like he troubleshooted, he recorded this like pretty long loop video or style this entire Webflow site. I mainly use the FinSuite client first, which is like the, their conventions because I realized it's pretty scalable in terms of how do I make global changes itself. So even their style guide was the client client first style guide that I've used. I use Wiper slider, so it's a very easy to use library, JavaScript library. I don't know how to write code, but some of these library are very, very, very easy to implement into Webflow. Here I mark my custom codes with some description text. So if I need to go back, I know where I can find the specific snippets of code. 
code. I usually follow tutorials that I found online. Or very often I find myself using ChatGPT to customize, to customize and correct custom codes. Let's take this element, for example. I create animations that I can reuse. So they have the interaction trigger as effect element. And I just set the opacities to zero, some blur, let it move transform and then I bring that to zero. I bring all the values to to normal values. I move it to zero. I bring the opacity back to 100% and the filter to zero so that they appear nicely. I use these animations across the website. So as you scroll into view, you can reuse all these all these interactions. Creating this style guide within Webflow so I can easily work with. So I have the container, typography, colors, everything I need. It was really important because, for example, this noise in the background, I didn't want to put it on the body. The body color is black because sometimes I want to show it. I want the grid and the noisy background to be on top of other things like blur and let's see it here for example this blur is behind the noise and it makes a really cool effect i think so i really had to separate it i just dragged the collection uh, this uh, card that i built into the collection list and of course i changed a few things for example i added this preview image in a light box so we can just click and open it and let's go to see on the live website because we can't see everything in webflow so i added some interactive uh, animations and also we can I, I added a custom code to make it trackable. Each one of the designers has developed their ideas on how to make the Hacksmith theme more appealing to both fans and partners. Not everybody has made it to a fully built website. We're now down to only six designers who will be competing for a chance to present their version of the website to the Hacksmith team. The designers will now practice their presentation skills by pitching their website to the team leads and only two of them will be selected to move to the next step. The tension is high. I'm so happy with how this came out. Every project you're ever presenting to the client could have been better. Of course, if you had more time, more money, that's given. That was the timeline that we had. That was the budget that we had. With that said, Alex, let's get started. We have a hero section with the code impossible tech made real. And on the second section, we have this type of animation, which work as a transition because uh, the entire concept I'm proposing is to outline the idea of a project from the blueprint to the real life situations. So we have a short animation. Then we have the showcase because the client mentioned they want the website to be appealing for their own audience. So we have the showcase with the future uh, videos from their main YouTube channel. We have some numbers. These are important for potential partners because they are looking into numbers and they have beautiful numbers on YouTube. On the following part, we have a showcase of the projects, the main future projects who the client will display on the website. The next part, we have short store. We also included some animations into that. The call to action section is divided in two parts. Submit your project idea and collaborate with Hacksmith. And then we have the footer. All right. Up next, we have Tin. You are a team of engineers and every project that you start is probably going to begin with some kind of a sketch or a blueprint. Whenever somebody is going to visit your website, first they're going to need to load the website. And that's why I made this loading animation where it starts with a blueprint of this product. That was my idea how to show this headline that you have, Impossible Tech Made Real. Uh, with the actual story and design behind. But in the second section, what is the most important is to show your latest video, indicate which video is the latest by uh, having this video the biggest. So it's no brainer that it's, this is the one you should be looking at first. Uh, I really like the sentence, employing dozens, inspiring hundreds of thousands, entertaining millions. This really stuck with me because it shows that you are not just entertaining platform. It's really strong message and that was also like an introduction to the project section where i wanted to show the best projects and also give the fans ability to power and 
see the more detailed uh, explanation badges of Guinness World Records and they can actually scale this is all in CMS whenever you win some awards you can mention this because this is really good for showing for social proof I wanted to say forging impossible into real working products felt like a good introduction for a shop shop section included this little toggle here where you can not only show that you have for example t-shirts you can actually show that you you have accessories and tools and all other things call to action section just to finish strong with the with the home page gang you're up for the premise of this website it's mainly i actually use all the exact same content from the hexmith website so that you can see for real in actuality how your content will be portrayed as the website itself as you scroll down this is a moving video itself whereby they can click and you can perhaps even showcase like a show reel there's a quick snippet of like all the the main interesting projects that we have done and as you move forward the the audience will be able to understand like what exactly that does hexmith that we take ideas from movies video games and make it to real working prototype and then next we will showcase the pro projects down here whereby it is more large and cinematic then as you scroll through the showcase videos which are probably maybe the more recent hexmith has really impressive statistics like 1.3 billion views 12 million subscribers so this can also attract like potential partners utilizing all this kind of social proof and statistics I just like enter in on the inspiration piece which start like parallax images and just to further emphasize on like what hexmith does then next we go to the store and we just have a nice moving text here to just give like a brief snippet of what actually that is in the store without showcasing the entire store itself and then upon hover you can get some little description and when you click it just brings them to the store or since the two audience are like fans and potential partners we will see how we can lead them to the youtube membership page to subscribe to the member and then next year if when you click it goes to the partner page and just a very simple footer to close everything up and next i would showcase the partner page so the partner page the key thing about the design is actually how do we achieve consistency? Matteo next. The website with the logo and an out of view animation. Then we have some intro animation, as you might have seen, of the first left element. And we have an image that is very strong and represents already the essence of the brand. The signature graphic elements for the buttons, the call to action buttons with the rectangular edge. Then you can already start to see that the grid uh, as a background and that is shown by the by the hover of the cursor and it's, it's followed by the hover of the cursor going down the website you, you also see that the glow in the background appears stronger like a pulse when anything is clicked on the website so that brings a little touch of interest overall to the website we have the collection of the videos we can choose the most popular videos to showcase the fans we have some banners that bring in some more interest some more fun some more entertaining side to the website with some bold taglines we have the project section, we have a hover animation, easily updatable, and where we can show the major projects of Hacksmith. We have the store. I wanted to bring in a four column grid for the store so we can showcase a little bit more products and we don't have to take so much of, of the homepage space for this. You can start to see that we have some common and coherent animations and interactions for, for all the cards, like here in the stores. We have the card shrinking and the image uh, growing, and that's something that's also repeated throughout the website in the video section and other cards throughout the website then we have the last call to action section with some with some nice animations of the line of the graphic element and the footer revealing like it's stuck on the bottom and then reveals as you scroll down the page but then let's do this i want to add the touch of hacksmith which is very industrial and not only techy but also very inspiring my mission in this design and development was to combine these two feelings i wanted it to feel like a workshop where you build and create new things just like Hacksmith do and here becomes the real when I didn't put the exact video because I don't know what it is but here it will be then we have the showcase I also use a, like a light background for more informative things but overall we have also the black backgrounds and then we have the project with this nice hover and in the store I also thought it will be nice to have more than four combs so 
So for now, this has this little scrolling animation, and I think it will be a carousel. And in the end of the homepage, we have the food, of course, and also call to action for fans and for brands, partner with Hacksmith or to submit your project idea. And here we have the footer that allows you to navigate in the website and go to their social media and everything. Randy. Let's do it. We're trying to strike a juxtaposition of wonder, delight, but also keep it professional to kind of elevate the Hacksmith brand to the next level. We also don't want to forget to inject that Hacksmith personality. So on the homepage, let's grab the audience right away with video because that's essentially what one of the main primary pieces of content that you guys deliver on is video content. And so we want to sort of engage them right from the get. And as I continue to scroll through the homepage, I'm just going to call certain things out and a little bit about the decision making behind it. We have sort of like a mission statement to give a little bit of context about who you all are. And then we surface the videos right away. So I imagine that this would surface probably the most recent videos or whichever video that you guys feel will be the most valuable, maybe the most recent project. Below here are the most recent projects. Why don't we just really blow the projects section and give each project its own focus? And so we, we have this section here where you can kind of slide through image changes. And then when you click on this, it'll take you to that respective project page. Or if you want to see just kind of all of them in a list, you can go to all projects here. Down below here, we wanted to give a snippet that you guys also sell merchandise. I would recommend that we don't surface too many items on here. I think we want to give a preview and I also recommend that we don't want people buying from the site. So I imagine that we would just want to give them a preview, maybe a little description of that item, and then a link out to the shop that would take them to the external Hacksmith store. Who do you think should be picked to present to the Hacksmith team? Comment below to let us know. Next week, we'll announce who the two winning proposals are and the designers are going to get their chance to present their version of the website to the Hacksmith team. The Hacksmith team will then have the tough choice of choosing which website they're going to go with. I'll see you there.